so we have already discussed the classification of diseases according to homeopathy after the classification is done then we decide what will be our approach to the case because depending upon the type of disease if it is acute if it is chronic it is a subtype of acute or types of chronic disease depends on that how we are going to approach the case what our procedure will be for selection of medicine and how we will proceed for non medicinal management what are things we will advise the patient to take or not to take and i hope you know and remember that the purpose of case taking is to individualize so in order to individualize it is very important that we should know how it differs from other di diseases other persons that is very important and the case taking part is from 83 to 104 and that comprises of all the different approaches for case taking depending upon the classification of disease for acute we have to approach in a different way for epidemic for chronic we have to approach in a different way but here to these aphorisms hanneman has given us a general outline general instruction thinking that these general instructions will be applied to the patient and the physician will be qualified enough physician will have this much of intelligence and experience to decide in what type of disease how you will approach so that is what he left to us that on that we will decide how we are going to approach so in the content part what we find for 83 is requisite for understanding the picture of the disease and if you remember your 82 then in 82 we have already studied that for acute it is easier and why it is difficult for chronic and then in 83 before actually giving instructions for case taking he is telling us what are the requirement especially from point of view of a physician the person who is going to take up the case what are the preparations that he should take how he should approach the case what are the qualifications he should have or he should gather if he doesn't have that is what is discussed in this aphorism so this aphorism says this individualizing examination of a case of disease so one thing is decided that whatever we are going to study that is individualizing examination with that he is starting that this the process of case taking is nothing else but the individualizing examination of a case the aim is to individualize and your whole approach should be such that your goal or target is to find out those things which help us in individualize or differentiate the person for anything other than that may help you in other aspect but will not help you in selection of medicine so this individualizing examination of a case of disease for which i shall only give in this place general direction now there is another thing that need to be noticed here as it was in aphorism 3 that he is talking about this case of a case of disease this phrase of a case of disease is important so that you can understand the way hanneman was thinking hanneman was saying that for every disease you cannot have a general approach that approach may vary from case to case in other words it may vary from person to person so for every person who is nothing else but a case of a disease the instructions is being given in the aphorism to come and it is like 
of which the practitioner will bear in mind only what is applicable for each individual case. I am giving general instructions. I am giving everything that is need to be known. And from that, the physician has to pick up that for this particular case, what is to be applied. And that may not be applicable for another, suppose he is treating a case of malaria, for what is applicable in this particular case may not be applicable for another case of malaria. And examples, you don't need to be an Einstein to understand this. Examples are very easy. Symptoms related to female reproductive. You will ask a female patient of a particular age, up to a particular age. Similarly, there are physiological and anatomical differences between a male and female, a young and adult, an infant and a child. So all these things which will be applicable in which case, what is to be asked in which case, that depends upon the physician. So Hanneman is leaving a big task up to the physician with this hope that the physician who is going to take the case he has knowledge of anatomy knowledge of physiology gynecology practice of medicine and everything that you have to study with this background you will be able to apply the knowledge that he is giving because then only you will be able to differentiate and most important thing that you should have common sense, the rarest of the sense that you should have. And then he is giving some other qualifications or criteria. What is applicable for each individual case? It demands number one, freedom from prejudice. You have already studied this in your earlier aphorism, most probably five, I think. Five? Six. six. Good. So you all are awake. So in six, he has discussed that why a physician has to be prejudiced? Unprejudiced. Why a physician has to be unprejudiced? And he has given logic also. Now, while practically applying that, he is again reminding that this is very important that you should have freedom from prejudice. And freedom from prejudice in every case. Suppose for any diagnosed name of a disease, even if you have seen a hundred, it is very good that you will have an experience of hundred cases. But that experience should not cloud your intelligence, power to differentiate. That part should not be there, so that you will be able to differentiate. You should not think that in this season, when there is too much of heat, and people come from heat and take cold water, or they are in AC and then they go out in the heat. And I have seen Brainia working wonderfully. So first case Brainia, second case Brainia, third case Brainia. That does not mean that without verifying the fourth case will be given Brainia. If you give, then you are prejudiced. If you have a particular disease which is very common in your area and you find that all persons are suffering from gastroenteritis. So one, two, three, all gastroenteritis. So next person who comes and he tells you I am having this vomiting and diarrhea, that does not mean that without verifying you will say, yes, all, this person is also suffering from gastroenteritis. Neither should this prejudice be practically applicable when you are selecting the medicine, when you are deciding about the disease, when you are deciding about the diet and regimen that a person should follow. In none of the cases, because once you are prejudiced, then you don't need your study. You don't need your knowledge, your differentiating power, intelligence, all these are clouded. You don't be, you are not in a position to differentiate. So it is very important that in order to case taking especially, you should not under no circumstance, the prejudice should deviate from your normal course. And then there is 
sound senses. What is the meaning of sound senses? So sound, the word sound means normal or a healthy. And we have five senses. So all these senses should be healthy, sound, so that you are looking at a thing, you are hearing something, you are smelling something without any deviation in the way it is happening. And all these things are practically applicable. Don't think these are theoretical discussion. Because if you have some problem in your ear, you are not able to hear. You don't have sound hearing. Then the person is saying something and you are not listening. You are half listening. You are listening in a differentiated way, in a different way. You won't be able to hear the variations in the voice and eyes because you know you remember that there are three sources one three sources of symptoms the first is the patient so when he is narrating he is giving certain expressions and for that you need to have eyes vision just looking at it is not enough Observation is important. You look and then you interpret it so that you can understand what I am looking at. If a person is sweating, then you should see. You sh in order to know that he is sweating, you should know the normal. You have medicine where it is said that the as if the face is covered with grease or oily face. And you have medicine where there are wrinkles in the forehead. And you have medicine where the tongue is of a particular shape or particular color. And you have medicine where the person is smelling. When he is talking, you are getting bad smell. So for all these things, it is very important that you should have sound sense. When you, the three sources, one is patient, the second is physician. So when the physician, not only he listens, he is also supposed to physically examine the patient. So when you examine the patient, palpation, auscultation, all these things, it is very important that you should have sound senses. You should have the ability to differentiate which is cold and which is warm, which is dry and which is wet. And then we have attention in observing. Think of yourself as a patient. Will you like to go to a patient, a physician? He is a big shot maybe. Have three lines of degree. A to Z. But every few moment he is receiving a phone call. He is talking to you and then he has to stop you and he has to receive a phone call. Or he is in a hurry waiting for when you will go and next patient will come. You may not be a physician, but these things you are knowing. That he is in undue, he is not giving you full attention. So if anything else, at least you will not have full faith in him. You will not have this belief that he had heard my problem properly. That is what we want from a physician. So it is very important that he should have full observation on me. Then only there are, you know, there are said and unsaid symptoms. Many a time without saying, patient says something through expression, through uneasiness which is demarcated, manifested. How you will be able to know if you are not observing enough? There are questions by when you ask these questions, you find that the patient is very uncomfortable. Because there is another somebody sitting with him or her. And that is giving you a clue that I have something to say, 
but I am not comfortable in sharing this information in front of this person. Maybe anybody, it can be husband or father or mother or wife, anybody. How you will know this? Only you are if observant enough. All these things you read in Vitra Medica and the rubrics that you get, restlessness, fidgetiness, sadness, expression, body language. Body language is a big topic. And a homeopathic physician, it is very important that you should be aware of the body language. And you should be aware of how all these things manifest differently. But when you are reading body language, it is very interesting to read. But when you are reading body language, one thing you should make sure. That it is only a suggestion. It is only a hint. When you are sure that this means this. And then you don't confirm it by asking questions. You are making a big mistake. Because anybody can be behaving in a particular way because of one, two, three, four, so many reasons. There are so many reasons why. And how you will confirm it, which is the reason in this particular case. A very common example. Suppose a patient comes to you and sits and he is not comfortable in the chair. Every few seconds, he is changing his position. He is sitting, but he is changing his position. Restlessness. Hurried. Having piles. Fissure. Pant is not proper. AC is directly on his face. Any reason it can be. But then by further asking question, you need to confirm it. For that, you need attention in observing. And then there is fidelity in tracing the picture of the disease. Can anybody tell me what is the meaning of the word fidelity? Accuracy, Accuracy of the description. description. If I am biased, prejudiced, or I have my own way of noting down the case taking. That is why Hanuman was very specific. He told that specifically this is how you are supposed to note. There should not be anything that may be missed. So exact language of the patient. Now a chronic patient, you ask so many questions, he says so many things, many relevant, many relevant. Even if the patient is not like a Then also, there are so many things that is, there is interaction. You may not write every word, you know. But at the same time, fidelity is important. Truthfulness is important. The exact word that he is saying is important. Even if that exact word is, you are not getting. What he wanted to convey, that is important. If you miss that, then the whole purpose of case taking is lost. Many times you find when you sit in your OPD, you find that patients are, you are not Bengali speaking. And patient who comes, they are Bengali patient. And they give you some wonderful words, which you have not heard any time before. For cough, they say, I, am, I have khush khushe kashi. Now, how to convert it? You may not find it in dictionary even, you know. Many a time in Bengali dictionary, you these, these local words, dialects, you may not find it. The ideal way is to write khush khushe. And then inquire about it to the patient or to somebody else, to Bengali speaking or colleague. That what exactly does it mean? Many a time while describing mental symptoms, you get a particular phrase. And then you are writing it in your own way. There you should not miss what the patient want to convey. Because if you miss that, your whole purpose of case taking is compromised. Because case taking is not about asking question. We are not doing a clerical job. 
like you know asking name and address and gender like that not that we every question that we ask starting from the name to age to gender to address every question have a purpose and every answer that he says you have to keep in mind that he is telling me something and through these words he is conveying something which is not limited to these words he is conveying and this you can see when you see people around you a person who tells you the address in a particular way he tells the number of the street in a particular way or he tells you his age in a particular way all these denote so many things this you can understand if you are observant enough if you have sound senses if you are not biased or prejudiced and if you have fidelity and you know who is the best teacher for case taking life life when you go in bus or taxi or when you see or when you travel you see so many people you must learn to observe them and every person is manifesting in a different way so how this is being manifested that you have to learn and then you learn to ask question why you are asking question why you are asking question to your patient for inquiry for inquisitiveness no there is a purpose individualizing examination so every question that we ask every inquiry that we make none of these are for satisfying my in inquisitiveness but that is being done for a particular purpose and it is very important because you are asking so many personal things which commonly why should a patient share with you a human being a person a member of the society should share with you think of yourself will you like to share with somebody what you dream of what is your liking for food or disliking for food i am not going into those sexual things or very serious mental things i am talking of the general thing the general things also we don't want to share with anybody but you are going beyond it and how do you expect the person will tell you and tell you with honesty that is important because you have to convey the first and foremost to your patient that i am asking all these questions for a purpose my purpose is to help you my purpose is to treat you i am not asking these questions for just inquiry i am asking these questions for a particular purpose and all these informations will be safe with me confident with me confidentiality will be ma maintained i am not going to share it with anybody if you are able to convey to your patient then your patient will narrate to you very personal thing so it is very important and that depends upon doctor patient relationship the relationship between your patient and yourself that is very important for that you need to have a doctor patient relationship so in 83 master hanneman is discussing what are the requisite see organon was not written casually it was edited and reedited so many times six times we know but before going to press master hanneman must have edited hundreds of time and when it was translated then also all these words were selected with much thought behind it he is saying understanding the picture of the disease he is not saying knowing the picture of disease writing down the picture of disease because for writing you don't need anything 
For knowing also you don't know. If you have to understand the picture of the patient, the disease, then you need to have these qualities. To understand the disease, you need to have freedom from prejudice. You need to have sound senses. You need to have fidelity. And then you will be able to, if you have this, then you will be able to understand, comprehend. You will have a complete picture. When you have a complete picture, then you know this is not important. If I ask you to describe a dog, you have lost a dog, you had a pet and you have lost it. And you have come to me so that I will help you in finding the dog. You will tell me the picture of the dog. You are not going to start with it has four legs. It has four legs of course. But then you are not going to start with it has four legs. Why is that? Because it is common. So you will tell me those things. And how do you know what is common? Because you have seen it. And how do you know you ha it has what is uncommon? Because you have seen similar other types. You have seen similar other dogs. So you know that this is uncommon in my dog. So in our patient also, if we are exposed, and you are exposed, you are exposed to normal anatomy, you are exposed to normal physiology, you are now exposed to gynecology, obstetrics, surgery, pathology, practice of medicine, all these exposure is basically to let you know what is normal, what can be the varieties of abnormality. If you know that, then you can differentiate. So this is important that we should have the understanding, the picture of the disease. And for that, the requisite are as described in the aphorism.